Hey guys, today we are going to find out what is in my spear bag and what I use for freshwater spear fishing. So stay tuned. Let's get into this bag. So to start off, this is a Rife long fin pack. It is absolutely huge, although it doesn't look like it, which is great. So the first thing I have in my bag is an Evolve pole spear. This is sort of a backup and also a great main gun if you're just starting out pole spears are a great way to get started um, this one is a little higher end it's a little more expensive it'll run you about as much as most standard guns will it's all carbon fiber if you can see here it's got really really tight machined threads um, it actually this is the slip tip that comes with it it actually threads in there so tight if there's even grains of sand in there it, it binds a little bit which uh can be kind of a pain but it fits so well together and it's so sturdy it also comes with a uh three prong, prong paralyzer tip great all-around pole spear um, would highly recommend this to anybody looking to getting a higher end pole spear um, whether you're just starting out or more experience, this changes the game of pole spears for sure. So this is just in my bag in case I need it, uh, in case my main gun goes down. Um, of course, we have a low volume mask, which you've seen in the prior videos for the defog DIY. And I have my float. It is a Mako Professional float. It has a flag stand, an extra little bag, an extra gun bungees here to strap an extra gun it's got a weight on the bottom of it so for the keel in my little bag within that i usually carry sea drops um just because my spray bottle with my diy stuff doesn't really fit in that bag hey guys welcome back our light wasn't working last time we got it fixed and we spruced up the studio a little bit so diving back into this gear bag opening here we want to talk a little bit more about this float and this bite valve here. Um, unlike the typical bite valves on most where you pull out, pull it out like an inflatable beach toy, you have to pinch a thing and struggle to put air into it. It's not very efficient. This has a large hose here and a little pressure valve. You just push and when you blow air in and you let go, it seals itself back up. You can unscrew this right here and it stops it from going back in and it tucks right underneath here. As you can see, this is a really large inflatable float. Um, it's great for when you have a lot of fish on your stringer and you attach it to it and you don't hardly know that they're there. It keeps it very buoyant. Moving on, next we got a float line. Obviously key in any spear fishing element. Uh, we attached our float that we just showed you to us, or our gun rather. Um, I made these float lines. Um, and we can have a tutorial on that to show you guys how to do this. There's just some shrink tubing. And inside is 500 pound high-vis mono. Um, even being clear tubing with this mono, it reflects the light really well. And it glows in the water um, even during the day. So this works good. It's about 30 feet. Uh, we don't need a whole lot, 30, 40 feet. Um, allows us to go 30, 40 feet straight down most of the time. And anything further than that, and I can unclip it temporarily to dive a little bit deeper. Um, another element here obviously for free diving in general is a weight belt um haven't quite gotten around to getting a rubber one yet i uh, need to this is just a nylon web belt um, i have all my weights on here um, i don't necessarily dive with all these weights all the time it really depends on the thickness of the suit i'm wearing and whatever i need to maintain neutral buoyancy it's always good to have a couple extra weights with you and there is some in the bottom of this bag uh, i have to spray paint mine just so they're a little bit more camouflage and blend into my suit. And always remember you gotta have your 
quick release buckle here in case you need to drop it in a situation so you're not going to drown. And then I have my wetsuit. Uh, this is just a Mako 5mm 3D Yamamoto Reef suit. Uh, it's a great suit, really warm, as long as you lube it up really good, um, either with commercial lubricant or our DIY lubricant. I usually use that, works just fine. Here are the bottom waders to it. Uh, the great thing about these, aside from the, the built-in really thick knee pads, is having this knife pocket. Uh, it's great, you don't have to strap extra knife wrappings around your leg or constrict your leg at all. It just slips right in there and secures itself very well in here. And also to go with it, diving gloves, obviously. Having gloves protects your hands um, from zebra mussels around here. Um, just gives you a sense of comfort, a little bit more grip on your gun. And the fish, when you're grabbing them, you don't have to worry about getting spined by them or um, anything stabbing you in the water when you're grabbing onto rocks in the bottom or fishing lures or stuff like that. Um, these are almost, they're neoprene on the back, but they're almost more like work gloves. Um, I know a lot of people dive with just stretchy work gloves as well. And anything that you need to protect your hands, these have held up really well. Having this elastic cuff on them works great to wrap around and make a good seal on your suit um, to stop water exchange, keep you warm. Um, here I have a pair of diving socks. These are not even neoprene, they're just Lycra socks. And as you can see, I've, I've used a heck of a lot of them. Um, I go through about one a season. And then here we have my free dive fins. So these are Mako interchangeable competition free divers. Uh, the reason I chose these, I guess, is because you can interchange these blades for fiberglass or carbon, depending on what you need. Now around in here in Michigan, carbon is, a, is really nice to have during the summer. Um, but as the water temperatures get colder um, towards the fall, or if you're going to dive early spring or winter like I do, you can't really use the carbon fiber. They become very brittle and they uh, tend to snap or break under pressure. So I would recommend either plastic such as these or fiberglass at the most. So they can stand up to that cold water temperature. Um, and inside my little pouch in front here, That's all that's in the main compartment. I have my extra fin in there. I start off with a phone holder. If I need to take my car keys, if I'm by myself or with a friend and we drove there, a lot of modern cars today have key fobs and obviously you don't want to get those wet and I'll be danged if I'm going to leave it on my car for somebody to take. So having a little waterproof pouch like this with a little Velcro band on it, you can put your car keys, your fishing license, whatever you need in there and strap it right to your float. Um, I'll put it in here and put it right in my bag. I'll even put my phone in there once in a while. I didn't, generally don't take my phone because it heats up in those pouches very well and it doesn't uh, do the battery very good on there. A couple pair of needle nose in here. Um, these go along with extra rigging equipment. So you have your extra tie line for your bands, wishbone insertion tool, And a file keep your sh spear sharp on the go um, every time you come in and out of the water uh, whether you're shooting fish or you hit a rock or anything like that it's always important to keep your spear sharp um, the last thing you want to do is either lose a big fish or injure one that you didn't necessarily need to and here's my extra weight i was talking about and of course my dive knife great little crusty knife um, you don't need anything too big it's it's used as kind of either a uh, last resort if you get tangled in fishing line or uh, to dispatch your fish underwater so you don't want anything too big and unwieldy last thing you want to do is stab yourself in the process um, you don't need a big knife you just need a knife that'll cut and that's the important thing is that it's sharp so that's it for what's in the bag itself obviously as you can see behind me they have the guns that's pole spear that was in the first part of the video here is usually my backup just in case this is my primary gun it's a 130 mako predator pro um, it's got the gopro mount on here which is still on my gopro 
usually has two bands on it, but I got to re-rig it. Uh, these are the Salvamar Acid Green bands. I really like these bands. Um, they really work really well for fresh water. They have really good stretch and really good recoil on them. Nice big flopper. The reason we use, or I like to use these bigger guns, where we're at in Traverse City, and as you've seen in our videos, it's it's pretty clear water. Um, having that extra range is great. I have the maneuverability. I can see the fish way far away, so I don't usually need to bring a short gun. I can, I can afford the luxury of having the larger gun with me. Um, and that said, it's nice to have that pole spear to add that challenge if you need to. So this is usually my primary gun for around here. And I also have, this is one of my first spear guns I ever got, and this is a Predator Pro 2G. This is about a 65, 70 centimeter gun. I actually forget, I've had it for so long. Um, it works great. It's a closed muzzle. Uh, as you can see, this is an older style closed muzzle. Um, so no need to wrap your shooting line over. It's very fast to reload um, because it's so short. It's very easy to reach the bands on it. I don't have to do a two stage like this where I have to bring it forward and pull it back and then put it to my chest. I can put it straight to my chest and load it. Um, it's probably shot more fish than this gun and my pole spear combined. Um, I've had this for quite some time and generally this is one of our guns. If somebody comes and joins us, we'll lend out. They can use it and they love it. Um, an easy way to fashion a butt pad. This is just a flip flop and you just zip tie it to the back. This one has the Mako um, butt pad on it. As you can see there, but this flip flop works just as well. Just offers you a little bit of padding on there. So that's generally all I bring aside from our camera gear and the GoPro that this is being filmed on, obviously. Um, we bring the drone, we bring the, the dome here behind us for the GoPro. Uh, it's a great tool to have for filming underwater. Um, lets you get half above, half below. It has its own waterproof housing for the GoPro. And it actually has a trigger that you can record and stop as needed. Um, you can also mount this to an extension pole to get further away from you uh, to do selfie shots with or whatever. And it gives you a 10% wider field of view underwater. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. They are a great tool to have. And you, maybe you're not going to use it all the time while you're diving, but it gives your viewers and other people extra footage extra b-roll or even primary that you can use to make your videos better so we'll go into that later like i said we're going to be coming out with a gopro video on the settings that we like to use on our gopros um so stay tuned for that in the future and i hope you enjoyed the spear bag layout um if you have any questions drop them below and make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for future videos Thank you.